Hi, welcome back to the third episode of Getting Started with Edison. On the previous episode, I showed you how to update Linux running on the Edison using an image that we downloaded from Intel's site. I definitely recommend you do this first because it fixes a number of bugs. The most annoying of which is Edison has a habit of missing the first key you type in the console when we go to use it in just a minute, but that update fixes it. On this episode, I'm going to show you how to build a simple LED circuit. We're going to flash that LED, but this time we're going to do it from the console. Before we do that, quick history lesson. In 1991, Linus Torvalds was studying computer science at the University of Helsinki. He bought an IBM PC and began playing around with Minix, which is a Unix-like operating system used mostly for education. Sadly, he didn't like the relatively restrictive licensing of Minix, so he set out to create a completely open source and free-to-use operating system. The first prototypes were released later that year, and the project was ultimately named Linux after his name. Linus adopted the GNU General Public License for Linux so that anyone could use, copy, modify, and share the code as long as it retained its original license. And along with it, he released the source code for people to look at. Linux is very popular. It can be found almost anywhere. Supercomputers, desktops, laptops, you can run it on those. Even tablets and phones, if they're running Android, that's based on Linux. Some small embedded electronics, like our Edison here, are powerful enough to run full Linux. If you're not familiar with Linux, I recommend you read about it. Go find some websites, get a book, find yourself a distribution and just start playing with it. I started with Ubuntu and a book that walked me through some of the more advanced exercises. But for now, let's see what we've got running on the Edison. For this tutorial, you're going to need an Edison and an Arduino breakout board. Or if you don't have an Arduino breakout board, you're going to need a level shifter to get the GPIO voltage up to 3.3 or 5 volts. You're also going to need a breadboard, an LED, a 330 ohm resistor, and some jumper wires. Take the resistor and plug it into the breadboard. Then take the LED, connect that to the resistor in the breadboard, make sure the flat edge is facing away. Take a jumper wire and connect it from pin 8 to the resistor, and then connect another jumper wire from the LED to ground. Use your favorite serial terminal of choice to log into Edison. See the last episode if you need a refresher on how to do that. Log into Linux, just use the login name of root, and there's no password. The thing to remember is that everything is a file in Linux. We can control GPIO by reading and writing to files. The first thing we need to do is create access to the GPIO we need. So we're going to say echo 49 greater than symbol slash sys slash class slash GPIO slash export and hit enter. This is known as redirecting output of the console to a file. And in this case, we're writing the string 49 to the file export. This will automatically create a directory called GPIO 49 with other files that we need in the directory GPIO. GPIO 49 allows us to read and write values to pin 8 on the Arduino board. It's recommended that we put all of the pins into a tri-state mode while we set up the exact pin that we need. To do this, we're going to echo 214 to sys class GPIO export. GPIO 214 allows us to set everything else in tri-state. Then we need to echo 256 to sys class GPIO export. This pin controls the direction of pin 8, making it an input or an output, on the Arduino board. Now we need to set the data direction of our pin 8 to output. We're going to do that by echoing the string low to sys class GPIO GPIO 214 direction. This will put all of the pins into tri-state while we make our changes. Ideally, this protects all the pins from any changes that we might be making from anything like an electrical short or zapping them or something to that effect. Then we're going to echo high to GPIO 256 direction. Writing high to 256 sets pin 8 as an output. Finally, we want to echo high back into GPIO 214 slash direction to disable the tri-state from all the pins. This will allow us to actually flash an LED on and off. This might seem a little redundant from the steps we did before, but we need to echo the string out to GPIO 49 slash direction. This controls the actual pin connected to our LED. To turn the LED on, or to set the pin as high, echo 1 to GPIO 49 slash value, and that turns it on. To turn it off, we just need to echo 0 back into that same file. The problem is that we need to type all of these commands every time we reboot. 
So the fix for this is to make it a script. This allows us to run the script with one line rather than having to type out all 10 lines. To do this, we're gonna use VI. It's an old text editor that can be found in almost every Unix-based system. To start it, type VI blinky.sh, which is the name of our script, and then press I to insert text. Type the pound symbol, exclamation point, slash bin, slash sh. This hash, exclamation point, is called a shebang. It's used to indicate which interpreter Linux should use. In this case, it's going to be using the born shell located at slash bin slash sh. Then we want to type out all of the commands we did earlier that include setting up our data direction to be output. Finally, we want to add our blinking LED code into a while loop. To do a forever while loop, just type while space colon in the next line type do and then the next few lines make sure you indent them by one space. Echo 1 to GPIO 49 slash value, sleep 1 to sleep for a second, and then echo 0 to GPIO 49 slash value to turn off the LED. Then again, sleep 1 to sleep for a second, new line, make sure it's not indented, and type done. Now that we're done entering all of our code, hit escape to exit text entering mode, which goes into command mode for VI. Type colon X and press enter to save and exit. Then, to run it, just type sh space blinky.sh and hit enter. This should make the LED start blinking. If you get an error that some sort of device or resource is busy, note that this is because we had previously set up our exports and our data direction and the script is trying to do it again. It's just a warning, the LED should blink anyway. When you're ready to stop, just press Control c The cool thing about that script is that it's now saved on the Edison. So if you ever reboot or lose power to the Edison, just restart it and bring it back up and run that script to blink an LED again. If you want to learn more about controlling GPIO or other things from the Edison, check out Emutex Labs' site. The important thing to remember here is that everything in Linux is a file. And in order to blink that LED, we just wrote some text to some files in Linux. We then scripted that process so the whole thing was automated. In future episodes, We'll look into programming the Edison with other programming languages, controlling some more interesting hardware, and connecting it to the internet. So stay tuned.